So, what is XR Spatial Design? That's a question I get asked almost every day by people I meet. I'm an XR creative consultant. I blend my corporate experience as an entertainment executive with my passion as an indie content creator to rethink how CG animation is made with the aid of immersive and real-time virtual production tools. This is an emerging space evolving at an exciting pace with a lot of growth potential for all creative fields and people of, of all creative disciplines, especially visual storytelling, which is what I focus on. Um, I work with creative teams to transform their story development, design and production workflows to be more artist friendly and nimble, whilst unlocking rich transmedia storytelling possibilities only possible with XR spatial design techniques. In 2020 alone, I've presented my techniques and learnings at conferences and webinars and uh, company workshops practically every month. And in this video, I'm sharing a 10 minute talk I gave at XR Immersive Enterprise, a conference that happened back in April 2020. I hope it helps demystify XR spatial design for you and shows why I believe it's such a paradigm shift for creators and storytellers. Any questions, leave a comment below the video or message me on LinkedIn and the social channels. Thanks. This is such an exciting time for creators. We are at the precipice of a paradigm shift. You know, the landscape of video-based content today is an evolutionary result of democratized creation tools and decentralized distribution. Anyone can shoot and share videos easily. And that same evolution is happening for CG content creation, a paradigm shift accelerated by XR and real-time design tools. To give you some context, I'm a multidisciplined visual storyteller and creative media executive. I've been in the media and entertainment space for some 20 odd years, from advertising to film production, TV development, and VR. In my previous role as VP Creative for Immersive Entertainment at NBC Universal, I led creative innovation, strategy, narrative design, and visual development across traditional and emerging media, with a focus on animation, XR, real time, and virtual production. In parallel, I'm an independent animator, illustrator, and character designer. So alongside the management and executive path, I've continued to nurture my passion for the craft, very much as a hands-on creator. Now, as an independent consultant, I blend both sides to transform the origination, production, and distribution of CG content to be more democratized, creator-friendly, collaborative, and efficient. And I do that with XR spatial design techniques. Through my consultancy, I've introduced XR spatial design workflows to numerous companies in telecom, broadcast, themed entertainment, experiential marketing, software design, and UX. Whatever the sector, these workflows empower teams to visualize ideas, sell in concepts, and reach their audience and customers in ways they never could before. And that's the opportunity I'm excited to share with you today. You see, with the advancement of VR hardware comes a methodology to create CG visuals in a smarter way an alternative to established two-dimensional interfaces of the monitor and keyboard and mouse. With each project and in every team I've collaborated with, I found more and more use cases where visualizing an XR can significantly speed up iteration and dramatically reduce the learning curve of design and visualization tools for all skill levels. For enterprise, XR spatial design can enrich business practices in new and exciting ways, like effective remote team building exercises, onboarding new starters through enhanced virtual environments and supercharging employee engagement through cross-departmental, social and collaborative initiatives. Those are just some of my clients' use cases that I've enjoyed contributing to and learning from. If you're in the content creation business, there's a real opportunity to enable growth and reduce complexity. As you'll see, upskilling in CGI has never been more achievable for both novices and experienced users. So here are some techniques I've used successfully in my projects. These have also proved helpful for the clients I've consulted for. It's worth mentioning that many of the examples are rooted in entertainment and animation production, yet the principles are universal and the tools are applicable to any ideation process that requires CG visuals. The first is a stroke-based drawing and painting process. Here in VR, I'm creating a tree in the same amount of time it takes me to draw a tree on paper. Working this way, I also get a 3D model, which is handy for exploring variations. Similarly, you can sketch a larger scene like this in VR, 
and use the time you saved on modeling to iterate on rendering styles. So visualizing in VR enables artists like me to explore my design ideas in three dimensions much quicker than I could with the established method. This also unlocks the opportunity to retain the concept artist's hand, their unique visual style, further through the process. Sketching in VR feels like a natural extension of drawing in real life, at least more natural than the traditional CG route. So with this workflow, you can empower more members of your team to contribute ideas visually because tracking your hand in space is just more accessible for the majority of people. For this character, I used my original 2D artwork as reference and drew a 3D version using the same drawing process. A spatial drawing like this becomes a reference for iterating further in VR, like the mobile ready version on the far right. Obviously, like other 3D programs, you can pick any camera angle you want, but as far as I'm aware, VR is the only digital medium that places you into the visual as you're visualizing it. So designing within it means you're always reminded of the end user experience. Or in this case, you empathize with a character's point of view in a story, a clear understanding of the experience as you're creating it. And I've observed that clarity unite team members in review sessions that take place inside the VR scene. This way, a stakeholder joins the discussion early in the process, interprets conceptual work more accurately because they are in the space with everyone else, and then provides spatially relevant feedback for the next iteration. Spontaneous brainstorms and ideation sessions often spring up in this context. Here's an animatic I created with those techniques. The purpose of an animatic is usually to determine the essential storytelling moments, sequencing, shot sizes, location and pace of the narrative, maybe the scale and basic performance of the characters too. Because of the accelerated process of creating within VR, I was able to do this from scratch on my own in under a week. And as you can see, choices on color, lighting, mood and even rough animation are also being made which you would never be able to do in the traditional process. So this opens up new possibilities for pre-visualization and the briefing process. Another technique is mesh-based sculpting, where you manipulate primitive shapes like spheres, cubes and cylinders to essentially build more detailed forms in space. With this method, you can generate more robust production-ready models, stuff like cityscapes and industrial design and product design, uh, entire environments or even characters like this used in feature quality animation. The slinky shape of this snake was sculpted with one single hand movement, which would be unthinkable using established methods, but with VR, you get to be much more expressive when it comes to 3D modeling. This software is called Masterpiece Studio, a powerful tool for modeling and rigging that supports up to eight simultaneous users in a single scene. So virtual collaboration is a very real thing here for design teams and creatives. The third technique involves building an immersive scene by arranging pre-made assets. The way I like to describe it is, if you can lay the table for dinner, you can build a scene in VR because, as you can see, this is XR spatial design in full effect. Just the UI on its own leverages spatial design principles to create an accessible user experience for CG content creation. Here, as I'm browsing a folder on my hard drive, the thumbnails show up as little 3D previews. So right from the off, I'm experiencing the spatial design language in the app. And as I build this scene, I'm importing a bunch of assets from various other sources into my space with a sort of grab and place technique. It's a fast way for experienced users to generate ideas, but it's also a very accessible way for people with no 3D design training to contribute in a meaningful way to production. So this software is called Tavori. I've put it to use for event planning, designing experiential campaigns, in-store visualizations, user experience walkthroughs, and prototyping apps and games. You know, account handlers with no 3D software experience have told me how helpful it's been uh, getting to know Tavori for capturing client feedback 
and the turnaround time that follows with the in-house creative teams. So I'm using a virtual camera here to see how the scene works as a video or a still image. Now because I'm working in VR, the scene is already being validated for that format. And the cube I placed beneath these characters is my marker for the boundaries of a potential AR execution. So that's three different formats I'm able to visualize in a single workflow. So this one is easy for people for all skill levels to get into. Like this prototype for an AR app. What we're watching is a concept video, a pitch reel for how the app works and the overall user experience. Creating this video with Tavori in VR sums up the flexibility of the XR spatial design process. The designer embodies the end user while they're creating, which enriches their design choices. VR shares many of the same core principles as AR, so this also helps to develop and validate the AR-specific features for the MVP of the app. Later, this VR scene was used as a spatial design reference for the final app being built in AR Kit and AR Core. And this video that you're watching is repurposed as an animatic for the ad campaign and the sales and product sizzle reels. You might be thinking this all seems experimental and nascent, and frankly, it is. Yet even in these early days, XR workflows can bring considerable value by speeding up times to market, unlocking new revenue streams, and advancing digital transformation. Today, we can supercharge the ideation process and lay the foundations of transmedia production, which can lead to competitor advantage in the medium term. I have no doubt that this way of working will become commonplace in the near future. We're just scratching the surface with these workflows. We all know creativity isn't about working for a living, it's about playing for a living. And embracing opportunities for XR spatial design can keep you in that play state for longer, which means fewer barriers for creative flow, better iteration cycles, and ultimately more meaningful collaboration. Thanks very much.